is Kim Paquette. Uh, I'm a Canadian emerging jewelry artist. Uh, I'm from Quebec, Canada. Uh, I'm actually based in Toronto uh, because I just started the artist residency at Arbor Front Center. Uh, so the focus of my practice is uh, more about making one of a kind pieces, um, but I will try for the, this year and then following years uh, to make more pieces, my little collection that will be available for everybody. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very excited to be a part of this project and talk more uh, about my piece. My piece is called Magic to Manic. Uh, as you can see on the screen, it's a beautiful statement necklace that is made with steel, rubber, paint and uh, silver. So my inspiration about this piece is um, focus on the same inspiration that I have in my everyday uh, piece since I start to make uh, jewelry. So I use a lot of my inspiration in uh, when I'm walking in the cities of the urban landscape, a big building, architecture. Um, I also like to explore and look around me and look at people, the relation that I have with people around me. Um, and also, as you can see on the, the photo here, um, I like to see how the material is uh, um, reacting to the weather and the time. So paint and concrete and steel are very, very, um, a good inspiration for me. Um, and the next step in my making process is thinking about the team that we have. Uh, so for this project was it was about um, our relationship with technology. So I made I'm just thinking and writing on paper and just making a big, big, big brainstorming. And um, after that, I can relate to some of the words that I have and create a statement about my first idea. So um, I was thinking about 2020 and how my perception of fashion and accessory and jewelry is uh, influenced by uh, the trend of chain as an accessory. Um, so chain is everywhere. Um, even if it's not good quality, it's just everywhere. So it also uh, guide me in the reflection that uh, all the connection that we find in uh, with the link um, in chains, uh, it's it's not eternal. So I, I wanted to reflect on the way that all the connection that we made through social media, through internet, and all the technology that we have access to, um, it's sometimes very fast, very easy, but it's also very short and not very strong. Um, so when I decide that I will make a, a chain, uh, I start looking at pattern um, that I could use in a way that I will make my chain. So the one that I choose on this picture is the, the big black one in the middle. Um, so what I did after that is that I printed the same pattern in different sizes uh, and I focus on the ideas that I want to uh, be focused on it. So I wanted to make at first a solid chain so um, there is less movement in it. Um, I wanted to make it entirely by hand so I didn't want to use any technology um, and I want also to use non-precious material and I want it to be very light, lightweight uh, so it's easy to wear and the connection with the body uh, is uh, easier. So I went to um, sheet, <laughs> still sheets, as you can see on the left, and I cut everything uh, by hand. So for the non-jeweler that are listening right now, it's a very, very long process. So every pieces, uh, um, I use a little saw and I saw all of them. And for me, the making process of all of my pieces is very, very important. Uh, at the end for the, st the statement that I will write about it. Um, it's why for me technology is um, less relevant in my practice because 
I like to feel the material in my hand. I like to see how it reacts to me, how it reacts to my environment. Um, so when it's quick and fast and it just come out example of a 3D printer, for me, it doesn't have enough life for me. So yeah, it's a total of 28 pieces um, that needed, uh, as I said, that they are asking for some love. So again, for the non-jeweler, it's a lot of filing and sanding and make the piece very clean because as you can see, um, still uh, the metal itself is not very um, beautiful or appealing for a jeweler. So it's important to work very well with the material and give it some love. Uh, after that, I, I just find a good position for my necklace and I put numbers on all the pieces uh, because there is, you will see later, but there is a bottom layer and a top layer and that they are connected together. So it's very important that they find themselves together for all of the process that they stay together. So it's why they have number that they will follow through all the process. Um, so after that, I use the paint. Uh, uh, it's a very uh, handmade uh, street boot. Um, you also need to know that I was in a temporary studio the time that I did that. So I didn't have access to any, any uh, machine or any technology or any even fire torch to do solder. So yeah, here you can see that I apply with spray paint uh, five, or, uh, five layers. I just found that the, the, the paint gave a bit more dimension to the piece and it's less flat and there is more volume. Um, so after that, um, I want the piece to be rusted because um, again, to make a connection with the team, um, I find that technology and all the, the machine, cell phone, whatever we have in hand and uh, get old very fast and doesn't stay in our life for a long time. And it's just getting less um, easy to use. Um, so I scratch some part with the, the, the paint. So the steel is up the air. So I use after that vinegar, um, vinegar, peroxide and um, salt. So you have a, I can put all the pieces in the, the bath for 72 hours and the steel react to that very fast. So it become orange and it's very rusty, very fast. And even the salt give a very interesting texture to the pieces. Um, here, it's a very, um, just a little example about when I was seeing there is a layer at the bottom and at the top. Uh, so because I didn't have any access to torch, I did a tube rivet with silver. So um, the black uh, the shape is the rubber ring that connect all the pieces together. Um, and there is, a, yeah, there is no solder there. So it's all made by hand. There is 28 uh, rivet total. Um, so it's all hammer. Uh, it's a very long process, but again, it gave for me a lot, a lot of value at the piece at the end. Um, so yeah, the piece as um, at the end as a very, very lightweight, it's exactly what I wanted. Um, and it follow because it's all connected with rubber ring. Um, it's just, it just sit perfectly on the body and it can fit um, any kind of body shape or height or whatever. Um, so it's a 26 inches long. Um, uh, yeah, and it was very, I mean, when you look at the piece closely, your first impression of it is that it's that, oh, it's rusty, it's not very precious, um, it doesn't look right, but for me, it's a little bit like all the relationship that we can get on social media. It's always the first impression that we look first and we create, um, we create a kind of um, email, image of ourselves, as I call here a digital ego. And it just, you put yourself, it's all constructed and it doesn't represent necessarily the reality of it. Um, 
So the pieces is a little bit like that. When you look at it first, it doesn't look precious. It doesn't look like it could be like in a very, very uh, fancy uh, environment. But uh, for me, there, what I accord to this piece is completely the opposite of it. And when you think further and you look further and you take the time to feel it in real, um, it just it's just a different um, idea that it, that I have at the end about the piece. Um, yeah, so this is exactly what I was saying about. There is no no filter, no glamorous aspect about the piece. It's raw, but it's real, and it's why for me technology sometimes you can you lose a little bit of that. It's just how you can make everything perfect how you need to be perfect for uh, rep by representing yourself on social media how uh, even in the field of jewelry making how everything needs to be shiny and polished and but for me it's i'm not there in my practice and it's exactly what i wanted to share that you can have a beautiful statement on yourself you can wear it and it can take place and it doesn't need to be shiny it doesn't need to be polished it doesn't need to have like exactly what the society is, is asking for in social media or um internet so yeah i also did a little um box that you can uh it just it's ready it I cannot see but yeah it's made with cardboard and the piece sit on it very well so you can just i'm just ready to ship the piece to whoever want it <laughs> yeah just for me it's a way to give the piece more value to it so yeah thank you for listening uh, i hope you enjoy um my presentation and i also hope you understand a little bit what is behind this piece and what is my connection with um, the team and technology thank you